Having worked with networking and Unity Multiplayer in general for quite a few years now, it's very clear that there's a lot of pitfalls for new multiplayer developers. But networking really isn't that tough. So here are 10 tips that will help you avoid these common pitfalls when working with networking in Unity. Number one, building for the product and not to learn. So I get it, you have this game in mind and that's great, but you should really be focusing on learning networking as the first priority and not making this game. You can definitely learn networking by building this dream game of yours, but it should be in a way that does not put the game first. That can always come later once you're comfortable with the networking logic. Networking is basically a whole language of its own, and it's a bit like you trying to learn French by just speaking to French people. So I live in France now, I recently moved here, and they really just start mumble rapping at me and then they get upset when I can't mumble rap back at them. So start with something small, learn how RPCs work, syncing, and really all that good stuff and understand how the workflow of the network works. Tools like Pernet also let you mess with both the client and server authority, which essentially gives you a lot more freedom as to how and where the data is handled. So that should hopefully make for a really good starting point. Number two, scoping large. I get it, big games are sexy, and it's very likely what even got you interested in making games. But similar to single player, and it's even stronger with multiplayer, that small. Just the sheer amount of MMOs and competitive shooters that I see is way too damn high. Please just start small and then go a little bit smaller than that. We're talking game jam size. And as for the same in step one, get comfortable first and then expand from there. Number three is caring too much about performance. Making a game is already hard enough, so just start with that and worry about performance once it becomes an issue. Unity has a really good profiling tool that can easily tell you where your issues lie. And Pernet has several network profiling tools as well that can tell you exactly how much data you're using and where that data is coming from. So it shouldn't be difficult to find out where to improve later once that actually becomes an issue. I've seen way too many developers that just lose motivation because they were progressing too slowly. And very often that's thanks to everything needing to be optimized to 110%. It's really not necessary. Make a game first, make sure that it's fun and that it's a good game for players to play and then you can optimize from there. Number four is converting assets and tools from single player to multiplayer. I get it, you've seen some tool that would make it very easy to make your game like a full first person player controller for example. And I really get it, it makes it fun to jump headfirst into just making the sexy part of the game. However, it also makes you jump headfirst into trying to convert someone else's code before you can even write your own. And I really hope that saying it like that makes it really obvious why that's a bad idea. And I'm not trying to say that you can't use various assets and tools, but start small and keep things simple. Make your own simple controller and finish a simple version of your game with that. And at that point you will have gotten the skills to now more easily adapt networking to other scenarios as well. Number five is making a lobby. And Sure, look, I get it, I've worked with multiplayer games for a while. Multiplayer games need lobbies and generally just ways to join each other on Steam and alike. But, and this is a really big but, why do you need a lobby when you don't have a game? There are ways to test with others without needing a full lobby setup. For example, we have the Per Transport, which allows you to just plug and play a relay completely free of charge. So you can easily test online with your friends, so once again, make the game your very first priority. I've seen heaps of completely new multiplayer developers that never get anywhere because they can't get the lobby to work. And they don't understand the difference between Steam and networking and this will really become a big hindrance throughout. Number six is not debugging with the logic. Really, genuinely one of the big advantages to message-based networking like Mira and Pernet is the fact that the logic is pretty easy to follow. Just go and watch my the only multiplayer tutorial you'll need in 2025 video and you'll understand it in just the first 12 minutes you'll be able to follow the logic very easily. Essentially RPCs should be seen as instruction as to who runs the code. So debugging is actually quite easy when you try to follow this train of thought. So let's just take an example here. Here I have a null reference in my console and let's have a look at that. And here we see the culprit line. We're trying to set the color but something here is null. So we start by debugging out the game object itself. And indeed, looking in the console now, the game object doesn't exist. So now we check where we have the game object from, and it comes from a parameter in this observer's RPC. So let's check where that RPC is called from. And so here we can see that we're on the server, and the server is now sending this observer's RPC with the game object. So let's try and log it out and also just confirm that the game object is null here. And indeed, it's null here as well. So let's have a look at where this game object even comes from. 
And well, as we can see here, it's a serialized field in the script. So looking at it in editor, we can actually see that the field was never populated. Obviously, this is an extremely simple example, but I've seen the majority of the devs that we support are having issues with null references, which are typically the absolute easiest issues to narrow down by just really following the logic backwards. And this really goes for a lot of game development in general. Number seven is not joining the Pernet community. It really saddens Pebbles here that there are so many devs out there that isn't part of the Pernet Discord, all lonely and cold. But everyone is welcoming the warmth over here. So many cool devs helping out each other or just chatting and having fun. But for real though, let's go on to number eight, which is caring about cheating. First of all, stopping cheating in a network game is a challenge and something to be aware of for sure. However, it's really important to once again understand that it's not everything. And as I said before, it's hard enough already to make a game. So stop by making that and worry about the rest later. However, this one is a little bit different because there is a deeper level to this given that stopping cheating is typically something that is taxing on the underlying systems. So of course, building with it in mind will always be better. However, if you've never even made or finished any level of multiplayer game before, maybe working on a game where cheating isn't a big problem is a better approach for now. Like a co-op game, or it can still be a PvP game, but maybe just between friends. Anti-cheating is really a huge, huge topic, both for networking, but also for the non-networking part of the game. Hence why also big games, even like Counter-Strike, struggle so much with stopping cheaters. Number nine, I titled Assumptions Kill. It's actually something I got from the Reacher series, but I really like the saying. Essentially, we see it all the time, not just with networking. You log into the idea of something absolutely works, and it turns out it was a completely different issue. The most common one I see is people trying to test and build and just saying that spawning doesn't work because the camera is stuck or something like that and syncing must surely be wrong. But it actually turns out that their connection just never started properly in build and so no manual debugging was supposedly done because they assumed that it was the spawning that was broken or that the camera was stuck or the player was stuck when in fact and in reality the connection was just never started and how can you play a multiplayer game without a connection? Well you can't. <laughs> so that was the issue, right? And so from here, it's actually very easy to solve. You just got to start by following step number six again, which is debugging. Just lock what you think is broken. Start by logging it or follow the logs that are already there and really start moving backwards, log out more until you find the culprit. And from there, it'll really be pretty easy. I tend to just call it test and confirm. So if you have a theory that spawning isn't working, well, start by maybe checking in the spawning script. Even if it's a permanent script, try and throw a log in there and check if the spawn is ever called you'll in this case see that the spawn was never actually called, which means the issue is further back. If the spawning now was called, well, well then you'd have to move forward to figure out where does logic stop. But if it was never called, you have to move backwards to figure out where it stopped. And number 10, the very last one, is treating networking as a plugin. Networking isn't just some add this package and it's done. It's a part of your game's core design and functionality. So if you treat it like just a bold on, you'll constantly fight your own code because you'll be making single player code that now needs to be converted all the time. And that will just be a bigger challenge than building with multiplayer in mind from the beginning. So take it slow, take it one step at a time, and design and build with multiplayer as the core of the game. I hope this little list was helpful to you, and hopefully it can help a lot of people avoid common pitfalls. If you have any issues and questions and whatnot, feel free to always join the Planet Discord. There's a bunch of other awesome, really skilled and talented developers ready to help out over there. And other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video and just have a wonderful day.